Okay. Hello there, randonauts. So I have to tell you, I have fought so much with myself about whether or not I should do this randonautica today. But with the anniversary being today, today is August 13th, 2021. It is three years to the day since Chris Watts murdered his pregnant wife and two daughters in Frederick, Colorado. And this year, for some reason, I could really feel the date coming up. Like I could just feel it coming up. And I thought maybe I need to revisit the, the Frederick area and do another Randonautica about this case. Why do I have reservations? Well, <laughs> For one, it's a very controversial, very emotional case that a lot of people still, it brings out the crazy in people. And a little bit of that is understandable, but there's definitely more crazy that seems to come out of the wood paneled walls of the internet with this Chris Watts murder than I've seen in a lot of other murders that happen. I don't know what it is about the Watts murder, but there is something that makes people really heightened just emotional and and it makes me emotional I remember when it happened three years ago I was like glued addicted to looking up every little detail of like how things were unfolding watching all of the footage of him being interviewed by the FBI like just really getting deep in there and so I am nervous about reopening this this wound and talking about this again and um, and I can really feel the potency of today being the anniversary and I'm just like I'm I guess I'm, I'm humbled in the face of what I might be dealing with and getting today so but I also just feel like I knew I had to do it there was just something in me that was like Genevieve just do this it's gonna be okay I brought my tiger's eye is in my pocket let me show you I brought my tiger's <laughs> my tiger's eye stone for protection and strength and just reminder of my own personal power and I feel like I really need that today. So here we go. But speaking of crazy, I need to put in a little a little shout out, a little hey, hey there to the people who might be clicking on this video just with the purpose to hate on me. Because as I said, there's something about the Watts case that brings out the crazy. I'm getting a ton of texts for some reason. And I am trying to do this video with the utmost respect for the case. That is actually why I'm starting this at the first point I was given in the other Randonautica adventure that I did with my friend, I believe it was last winter. We started at the house and then we were led to this point. And the point that we were led to is where I am right now um, because I purposefully want to respect the neighbors. I don't want to go to the house or to that neighborhood unless the app sends me there. And who knows, that would be unbelievable and crazy if the app did send me over there. I don't know what's going to happen, but I guess knock on glass that that doesn't happen because that would just freak me out so much. But um, I am doing this Randonautica with the intention of bringing more healing and maybe deeper peace and insight to people who are still so affected by this case. And I do not want to rock the boat in the sense of like all of the drama that's surrounding the house. There's tons of videos about the house. If you want to go see the house, if you want to look at videos of that, you can look at my own video of when we went there. I just, I don't want to go there again unless the app like forces me to go there and time will tell, I guess. But the baseline for my intentions today are to bring deeper peace and understanding to myself and maybe whoever else is watching this and is very interested in this very odd case. And I say odd because it was like the perfect American suburban family and then this crazy thing happened. I think that's part of the reason why we're so, so crazy captivated by it. So anyway, now I'm pulling up the app, the Randonautica app. So here is where I am right now. Um, before I go, I'll show you a little bit of obviously like my surroundings here. So you can see if you watch that video, you can remember what this first point was like, but this is my radius. We are in Frederick, Colorado, which is a weird place. I have to say, um, and I feel like it's gotten weirder, I'm sure, since the murders have happened three years ago. Um, it's a very, it's a very rural community. It's a little bit more conservative. There is a lot of like, kind of like heavy duty industry here, like building and trucks and moving of dirt and oil. Obviously oil is <laughs> out of here. I also heard a statistic once 
that blows my mind that Frederick, Colorado is one of the highest human trafficking rates in the United States, which is crazy. It's just, to me, it says that this is the kind of place where there's a lot going on beneath the surface. This is, it looks like on the surface, like a sort of a nice little small suburban America sort of community, but underneath there's like shadowy things that are happening. And that's why using an app like Randonautica is so interesting in a place like this. So there's, there's that. Okay, enough of me talking. Again, here's the radius. I'm gonna put in my first intention. My goal today is to do two intentions. And my first one is I'm having trouble wording it, but I guess my first intention is what do we need to know now, three years after these horrific murders have happened, what do we as a society need to know now about this, the lessons from this, I guess. Does that make sense? I hope so, Rainonautica. Give me a good point about that. So. Here we go, I'm gonna magically transmute from my head into the app. The app is gonna give me a random location that is supposedly aligned with my intention. We're gonna to go to that location and explore it and see if we can get some sort of connection between my intention and the place out of it. I'm just saying that because some people who are watching this might not know about Rainonautica. That was a mistake I made in my first Watts murder video. So that's, that's what we're doing. So again, this is the radius of places it could give me somewhere within this, this circle, and let's see what happens. What do we need to know three years after the Watts murders? What do we need to know? Okay. I don't know why, but I'm instantly like, I got like a ugh feeling with this because it's like, okay, here we, I'm just gonna show it to you. Can you focus? It's like a dirt road next to looking like an oil thing. I think that's what that is. and. I don't like that. It just freaks me out. So I also don't know if that is, if this is on like private property, if I can drive down there or not. So we'll just see. So let's start driving. Although first I promised I would show you this area again. And so I'll show you just really briefly and we're gonna hit the road. So I can link the video to when we were led to this point. But my first intention I believe for that video was to get a message from Shanann of what does Shanann want us to know um, from the other side. We were, we were led to this point and in this tree, which was so cool, there was um, two doves that flew out of it like right as I parked here. And it kind of looks like there's still a nest in there maybe. But, um, but anyway, so the point was kind of right over here and it was, it was interesting to walk around and sort of see what there was to see. So, so that's where we're starting today. Feels a little bit connected to Shanann then to start from this point and I like that. So anyway, let's hit the road. Let's find this this field where hopefully we will not die. So this point is not actually super close. It's like an um, like an eight minute drive away. So that's always interesting to me when we're led to a point that's kind of far, because to me that means it's like more specific almost. Like if it has to take me farther to meet my intention, it's like telling me this is something that's really, really specific. Like it's worth the drive because this is something that's really specific to your intention. So. Um, so that is interesting. So right now I'm still just kind of leaving this sort of industrial park, like working In 1, park. Feet, turn right I don't know what I'm saying. Um, that the other point was, and yeah, we'll just see what is going to happen as we get out there. So it just had me turn that off on onto this, frontage road. um, I guess a frontage road, road along the main highway. I've never been down here. I mean, well, why would I? Why would I come down here? I don't really come into this area very often. Don't have a lot of reason to. But it's obviously a really rural kind of side road connecting to the fields, and obviously our point is in some sort of field next to an oil thing. Which just ugh, I hate looking at those oil things, especially when it comes to like a Chris Watts murder specific. Thing because it's like all I can see is you know what he did to his daughters putting them into an oil tanker so really not looking forward to that if that's what this is going to be but I also don't know it could be something else I guess a quarter mile, turn right onto Tipple Park. but I'm sorry that the uh, <laughs> like I can I can only imagine your view of this through the little camera is it's it's a lot of nothing out here it looks like I'm not near the mountains. It looks like Kansas or something. Okay, whoa, we're turning left. Into 
interesting. Right I mean, sorry, right, right, wow. I can't even, like, get my directions straight because I am just all over the place. Okay, interesting. So there's, like, a weird wood thing over there. Everyone here drives a really big Ford truck. Head north on East I-25 Frontage Road toward okay. Commerce Court. I am nervous turn left a little bit Parkway, then because turn right. I think... Yeah, it wants me to turn right into this area, and you can, and I don't know if you can see, but there's like a lot of people, like there's like a guy spraying the crops in there. There is, oh, pipeline construction ahead, interesting. Oh yeah, and then this guy's turning in there. So this is where it wants me to turn. I can't turn in here. This is like clearly not something for me. Like this is like construction farminess over here. This is like a not a place I can turn, but that is where it wants me to turn. So I'm going to try to pull over somewhere up here. We're going to reassess Continue for half a mile. situation, okay? So I just pulled over into a little like turn off thing. Not turn off, but it's like a little, let me just show you. Whoa, focus. A side, side part of the road. There's the field. Our point is out there somewhere. But as you can see on my phone here, my fears were kind of realized in that we cannot just drive into this field like that. This is definitely a private situation and the point is out there. So, ugh. From what I can tell about this point is this field, it's a huge cornfield, but it's like in the cornfield are lots of oil rigs, which is common in this area. Um, and that's kind of how it is all the way out there. Although, oh my gosh, let me just, let me show you something. I just look to my left out here and I can see some other, maybe those aren't oil tanks, maybe they're water tanks. I don't actually know. I don't know much about what any of this equipment is, but just seeing these really reminded me of the kind of tanks that Chris Watts put his kids in. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know what to do. I know that we can't go out there, but what I was gonna say before is that, oh my gosh, that truck like revved like right next to me. That was so scary. Why do people do that? Why do people with like very small penises like to like rev their engine and stuff? I feel like it's like very small dick energy. Just, you don't need to do that. Okay, I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you, except that it looks like here from this point of view, it probably is how it looks down there. And that is that there's little oil whatever the pumps are in between the corn and the hay. And that's probably what we would see if we were out there. And I don't know what to make of that yet, except for it is very reminiscent of the kind of area that Chris Watts put his, um, you know, where he left his family. And I got a really similar point in the first Watts video, except it was even more direct and that like the point really was right next to like these really big oil tanks that really were like exact replicas or you know same thing as what he put his kids in so this is like so maybe there's nothing new to get out of this because all all we still have to know three years later is that chris watts is a douchebag totally fucking insane excuse my language doing this to his family here's here's another picture of what that looked like with the field and the oil it's also interesting that all along this road are the orange signs that say pipeline construction ahead. I don't know if this is the same company maybe that he worked for. I know a lot of people out in this area. I don't even remember. Is it Anadarko? Is that? I, I don't know. I'm making stuff up. I don't know. But a lot of people work in the oil industry out here. And obviously you can see why. There's a lot of, um, a lot of oily construction things that happen out here. So... Just interesting, interesting things. But you guys, I am really not satisfied. I would like a point that I can actually get out and explore. So I'm putting my camera back down. Thank you for your patience. And I've pulled up the app again. Let's reset it though. So that, um, okay, not doing that. Okay, here we go, it's a reset. There I am in the center of this four kilometer radius out here in Farmyland, USA. What should our next intention be though? Okay, I have one. I want to know what is an unknown detail that maybe the public still doesn't know about this Watts murder?
And I'm almost hesitant to say that because it sounds like maybe I don't want to know. We don't want to know. I don't like the part of me wants to know. Part of me doesn't want to know. But I think that could be an interesting, an interesting point if we, if we get something. So again, here we go. Here's our radius. I'm going to put that in. Unknown detail about the monster. Ooh, we got a point quick. Ooh, okay. Whoa. I'm just, okay. I got chills. I got chills. Okay. Let's, I'm going to show this to you. So it's right by a road, which is good because that means that we can see it. It looks like it's in a field and it's by a neighborhood and I don't know that might not be his neighborhood but it could be oh maybe it's not I actually don't know I really have no idea but it's a it's a it's a point and so let's go <laughs> I'm like weirdly I feel this one feels real feels like we're gonna find something let's let's just go goodbye oil field with random pumps or whatever it is going on out there Again, this is where we would have turned this road where the white truck is um, to get to that point, but cannot happen. So onward and upward, I guess. Looks like a storm is kind of coming in. That truck's having a problem. You can see all the um, gray smoke coming out of it. It's moving very slowly. Okay, so I'm turning left, apparently, up here. So we're back on the frontage, the, the frontage road, I should say, along I-25. I wonder if Frederick is a popular place for human trafficking because it's very easy to get in and out of. Like it's, the whole town kind of straddles I-25 and it's close to, close to Wyoming, it's close to Denver, but also far enough away. I don't know, so I could, I could see how this could be a hub for like some very underground, because because human traffickers will be trying to find some place low key kind of off the grid that no one's really paying attention to but has quick in and out access and frederick is definitely that kind of place so i don't know it's just weird like it's weird that this insane murder that got such a high profile going on around it um you know happened in the same place that there's like a lot of other weird stuff happening and then um and then obviously there's a lot of oil and fracking here which can also be a controversial topic for a lot of people and all of this is just like like 30 minutes away from Boulder, Colorado, which is like the total opposite. It's just fascinating to me how places really do embody energy. And it's just, I can't even explain it. It's just, it's just how it is. Okay, I'm turning, wait, I'm turning right? Ooh, let's, well, actually I messed this up. We're gonna go this way and we're gonna turn left. Okay, everyone's okay with that. Yep, okay, cool. All right, we're back on track. And this point, I was going to say before, is also not super close. It's also an eight minute drive from where I was, which is interesting. Not super close. It definitely is not leading us to the Chris Watts, the Chris and Shanann, whatever house neighborhood. This is a different neighborhood. It's actually the other side of Frederick, the older side of Frederick, like the original original part of Frederick, I guess. They actually lived in like a newer, newer development that was built in 2013. And we're kind of going more towards like, whatever I would think of as like the original part, but it's all just suburbia. So I guess there's like, you can't say much about original versus newer. Cause it's all, it's all kind of newer. Okay. So we are almost there. Yes, and we really are. I guess this is technically downtown the traffic circle. Frederick. I have literally never, never been over here. Hey, okay, wow, they really do have like a main street and stuff. I'm turning right. How crazy and cool. It's kind of cute down here. Like, I, I just can't even believe that I've never been down here. I mean, I guess I can because I've never had a reason, as we have talked about. But it's really cute, and it definitely has an older vibe. Down, down this way than in the um, suburban, suburban oasis sprawl that is in the fields that we passed. But we are almost there. Okay, whoa. We, whoa, we're actually really close. Okay, I have to park. We're like right at the point. Hopefully I can park on the street over here. Let me, oh good. Okay, yes I can. This is fascinating. Okay, I just have to show you because it wanted me to keep driving. I can't keep driving. This is a sidewalk, I think. 
So I parked right here and the point is right over here and this is a sidewalk. So, and it's like kind of around a park. So I'm really excited. There's lots of weird stuff in this field. I was, I briefly drove by on this road, I could kind of see, and I was like, okay, there is definitely gotta be some symbolism happening over here. And I'm so glad that we can walk out and access it. So let's go explore. Okay, so this is a really interesting area. You can see kind of parked over there and it's like suburbia, suburbia, suburbia. But then over here, you can see it kind of turns into a sidewalk and a semi-parkish kind of feel around more farmy fields. But our point, I guess I could have driven over here because there is a weird little parking lot. I don't know if you can hear, but there is a very loud like cicada type sound but I can't tell if it's really cicadas or if it's like a, the electrical box. I'm pretty sure it must be cicadas, but because that's what it, exactly what it sounds like. But it's just very loud and odd. Um, and then there is, oh, I just tripped. That's great. There is this sketchy little parking lot with like a white car with tinted windows in it. And then our point is literally i believe along the sidewalk but we got to walk a little bit further down so let's just go on a little healthy little walk here totally normal along the sidewalk i don't know if you can see it yet but there's like oh i think it's like exercise equipment or something maybe but there's also these really weird big sculptures okay the white sketchy car just left maybe it was freaked out that I'm filming, or maybe nothing to do with me. There's always that. Okay, I think we're close to the point. I can feel it, but let me check my phone to make sure. Okay, I lied. The point is past the sidewalk. So this sidewalk kind of goes in a loop. We're obviously halfway down this side of the sidewalk, and then the point is out there, kind of in the actual field. So we're gonna have to go to the end of the sidewalk and maybe a little bit past into that field. Here we go. Here's some of this interesting exercise equipment, kind of showing you, you know, how to use it and be fit, I guess. That's cool. There's a lot of parks in Colorado that do stuff like that. Cause you know, we're such fit, active people, but for some reason it feels odd here. It feels odd to have, well, this is the creepiest freaking bald eagle I've ever seen. He looks drunk. Why? And you have a wasp in your freaking eye. This doesn't feel right. Everything about you, sir, feels wrong to me. And I'm just gonna keep, ugh. Why are you, because clearly it's supposed to be a bald eagle, but he's like posed like a creepy vulture. Ugh, maybe this is symbolism for Chris Watts because that is so him. Like he on the outside looks like this really nice, like noble man. And then deep down, he's really just like a freaking vulture with wasps in his freaking eyes. Ugh. Anyway, let's keep going. That does not, I don't know who signed off on that being a part of the park walk thing, but they, they were very much on drugs when they made that decision to include that. So anyway, oh gosh, now the wasp is in my eye. Ugh, you can't see it, but that was bad. Okay. So as you can see, we've reached the point where we need to go off-roading because the point is definitely that way. But here's another interesting sculpture. Gosh, what? Like, I see what they're doing here. Like, I like that they're representing the native community. But why does this person look so scary i just like every every sculpture looks like they're a little deranged like they're a little bit not okay and i just it makes me feel weird so anyway time to off-road i guess i'm a little bit nervous about snakes but okay first of all my attention is drawn over here as i start my off-road adventure looking at the ground for snakes and there's not so that's good Okay, so we have these weird pipes that I've never seen before. They're just sticking out. It says warning pipeline. So they're obviously attached to something with the gas down there. So I'm just gonna keep going. What is that? What is that? Okay, it's just tape. 
You see, I thought it was a snake skin. It's just tape. I don't like this. I don't like off-roading right now, but I'm doing it for you. I'm also looking at the ground, not just for snakes, but just in case there's anything on the ground that would be very valuable to us, very interesting. Um, I think, okay, there's a road over here. I might just stick to this road. That's not meant to be walked on, I think. I think mean, it is meant, oh. A beautiful butterfly. Oh, I gotta get this, this. I feel like this is like, this is like a little hello from Shanann. I can just feel it. Oh, hello. Oh my goodness. So, there she goes. There. Oh, oh, she's flying right. Oh my gosh. That was so cool. She's like flew around me. Now she's over there. That is interesting. Oh my gosh, I'm being bitten by bugs at the same time. This feels so many feelings. There's butterflies that I feel are gifts. And then there's other bugs that are not nice that are eating me. So, okay, navigating the grass, getting into the stones. Here we go. Lord in heaven. Also, I'm using a stick, like similar to a selfie stick to prop my camera up as I walk. And I'm really hoping that's giving you guys a little extra stability because I feel bad that sometimes when I'm really in venture mode and, oh gosh, bug, another bug. Um, <laughs> when I'm really in adventure mode, I'm kind of, you know, all over the place with the camera. But now is the time I feel to recheck the point and see if we're there. I feel like we gotta be close. Oh yeah, we're close. We technically passed it a little bit, so how crazy you know what i just realized the point was basically the butterfly like right over there when i was standing over there and that butterfly was flying around us that's when the beautiful monarch butterfly was like dancing all around me whoa i'm kind of like because i was expecting that when i say like an unexpected part of the murders that you know that's what i want to find um, I was expecting that it would lead me to something creepy and like, you know, some like piece of evidence that we didn't know or something. But, but now, because the monarch butterflies right now are actually pretty rare for anyone who's paying attention. The butterflies are like not, not coming back. They're kind of going extinct a little bit. And so to see such a big, healthy one right at the point, right at the point, and kind of dance around me. I feel like that is a sign from Shanann and maybe the unknown detail of this case is that Shanann and the babies, they really, really are at peace. And I have so felt that, but I know a lot of people are so traumatized, I'm just watching where I'm going, are so traumatized by this case that they project that they think that Shanann and the kids are not at peace because they think, well, I'm not at peace because this bothers me so much, so therefore there's no way that they're at peace. But in my mind, I'm like, if anyone deserves to be at peace and is at peace, it's those Shanann and her kids. Like, like they're definitely at peace. So anyway, I'm just back in the, in the spot. I'm gonna check my phone again one more time and just make sure this is the right point. The butterfly, of course, is gone. So maybe like the message was sent and received and now the butterfly has moved on with its life. But I'm gonna check my phone and just make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be. Okay, yeah, we are like right, basically right on it. I don't always trust the blue dot exactly because it tends to move like a little too easily sometimes, but this is basically, we are like, we're right there. We're right on the point. So standing here at this point, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a 360 view of everything again we're kind of right along this very busy road that i drove in on right next to the walking park another thing i just thought of is maybe this was an area that um shanann took the kids like this just seems like a really cool place that you might bring them to you know push the stroller walk on the sidewalk like maybe this area was kind of a part of their lives maybe even um friends lived over here and so that could be an unknown detail that maybe this is like where some people they knew live. Maybe they were over here sometimes. But I don't know, guys, there's something about the butterfly and the fact that it's totally gone now. Like it's just disappeared, which is also so crazy. Like this big, beautiful, healthy monarch butterfly just appeared right at this point, right as I was walking up to it. 
literally danced around me. I wish I had the camera on me to show you that. I was trying so hard to follow it that I don't know for sure like if it, if I caught it very well on camera, but it like actually did like a whole circle around me and then kind of moved on with its life. And it just felt like it was such a like clear message. And I just think that's really cool. So, and I didn't see any snakes. So that's pretty exciting. Nothing about you feels good, sir or ma'am. Why are you like the epitome of nightmare fuel? Everything about you I hate. You're not a good representation of America's national bird. All right, moving on with my life. I had to get out that, that deep judgment I had towards that. Eagle. Super weird, now that I'm back, as I get closer to my car and I'm back at this spot where I heard the super loud cicadas, they're, it's gone, like the super loud. They were so loud. I'm really curious if it picked up on my mic because I have a really small personal mic on right now. So I'm not sure how much I picked up on it, but it makes me feel like that sound, it like was adding to the pressure of like, needing to know whatever the answer was. And now I feel such um, such kind of a peace and relief from feeling like I got this message from Shanann that um, that I wonder if it's like, that's why the cicada sound is gone. Cause it's like, now, now we know we got the message, it's been received. And anyway, the annoying sounds are done and we can just be peaceful. <laughs> so, wow, that was a really, this is what I love about doing this is sometimes I'll go into an intention thinking I'm going to get like one kind of point with one kind of message. And I know when I'm really surprised by something that I get, that that means it was like really real. Cause it's not something I made up. It's something that I was surprised by, you know, like something and some information came to me at that location that was not what I was expecting. And that makes me feel like I really touched into something there, which just, it just feels good. Whew. So, wow, this was an interesting day. This was an interesting adventure. If you would like to comment on it constructively, please do so. If you would like to be a bully because I talked about the Chris Watts case publicly and you hate when people do that, you need to go off the internet, go to Dairy Queen, get an ice cream, make a friend, and just take a break from the internet because I don't want to be the one that ruins your day. You might as well just just take a break and go somewhere else. But if you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe and do all those things that are cool to do. And I will see you very soon for my next Randonautica adventure. And if you'd like to connect with me on socials, I have an Instagram account that I've lunked, I've lunked, that I've linked below. <laughs> below. And then I also have a Ko-Fi if you would like to tip me if you appreciate what I do on this channel. I love it when you when you show your support monetarily. That really does help me. <laughs> oh my god, why am I laughing at myself? I don't know. Anyway, I will see you guys very soon. Have a good rest of your day. Stay peaceful, stay blessed. <laughs>